Hey guys, James Sain. So in today's video, we're going to look at regurgitant fraction as it relates to aortic regurg. And then also I'll give, I'm will i going to give you my, uh, my, my hemodynamic cheat sheet of, of formulas that are handy in the cath lab, handy uh, if you're a CVT student. Um, so let's, let's get to the video. So here, and I'll try to leave a link. I think I can leave a link where you can download this as a Word document or a PDF. But here's, and I'm not going to go through all these, but... Uh, we have a shunt calculation. Okay, big boy cat. We have shunt calculation. Um, how to do that. Uh, how to calculate systemic blood flow, um, pulmonary blood flow. And then the different ways of calculating the shunt flow uh, as well as the simplified formula that most people go to as their, as, well, I don't know what most people do. That's what I often do. Use this simplified formula to calculate um, shunt. The Gorlin formula for mitral valve area, whether you want to do flow divided by some numbers or cardiac output divided by some numbers. And the Gorlin aortic valve area, the, the same, they're very similar other than the constants different and you're using diastolic filling period versus systolic filling period. Uh, the Hacky or the Hakai shortcut, um, which is generally pretty accurate for valve area. Calculations for MAP, SVR, PVR, whether you want it in woods or you want it in dines. Um, O2 consumption, there's a number of different ways, unless you're you know, actually calculating it. That's one of the drawbacks of the fit cardiac output is that the O2 consumption is, is um, estimated. So if you work in a lab where you actually measure it with a Douglas bag, then hey, more power to you. Uh, AV difference of forward cardiac output, um, how to do FIC cardiac output, some breakdown of different ways of looking at angiographic versus forward cardiac output and stroke volume, uh, different ways of how to calculate ejection fraction. Um, and, uh, and all this, this doesn't come from my mind. These, these com this comes from um, mainly three books, uh, um, Morton J. Kern, uh, Wes Todd, and Michael Ragosta. Um, more J. Kern, the handbook or whatever it's called, the, the, the one that everybody in the cath lab has. Um, more, uh, Michael Ragosa is the textbook of clinical hemodynamics, which is what I use for class. And uh, Wes Todd and his review, study review for uh, RCIS exam. And we'll delve more into, uh, here's regurgitant fraction. So you can think of regurgitant fraction. You can look at it through cardiac output or stroke volume. So it's the same concept of what should have gone forward in your cardiac output minus what actually did go forward in your cardiac output divided by what should have gone forward. Uh, and you can, like I said, you can look at that with stroke volume. Your stroke volume that should have gone out minus your stroke volume that actually did go out divided by the stroke volume that should have gone out. And then you'll get a percent um, uh, of the regurgitant uh, fraction less than 20 percent is mild 20 to 40 percent is considered moderate and greater than uh, 40 to 60 percent is moderate to severe and greater than 60 percent is really bad so let's take a look at some examples of how to calculate regurgitant fraction okay so on regurgitant fraction the forward cardiac output is thermodilutional or thick it measures the amount of blood that actually moves forward in the body angiographic cardiac output or stroke volume Measures the amount of blood that flows through the body also except in the aortic regurge. Because the stroke volume should all be going forward when the aortic valve closes, but in the aortic re regurge is incompetent. Uh, the stroke volume that should all be going forward, sometimes it leaks back into the LV. Anything that uses stroke volume uh, as part of the calculation won't be true because not all stroke volume goes forward uh, as in heart rate times stroke volume or in diastolic volume minus in systolic volume. The percent of that that leaks back into the LV is the regurgitant fraction. So angiographic, so, so the formula, and you can, you can replace cardiac output or stroke volume either way that you want to. So angiographic cardiac output minus thermodilutional or fit cardiac output, which is forward, divided by angiographic cardiac output. So in this example, we have a patient with an angiographic uh, cardiac output of 4.8 liters per minute, a fit cardiac output of 3.9. Um, what's the regurgitant fraction? So 4.8, what should have gone forward, 
minus 3.9 liters, what actually did go forward, divided by 4.8, what should have gone forward, gives us a, a number of 0 0.1875, 18% or rounded up to 19% regurgitant fraction. Um, but what's angiographic cardiac output? Like on, on the cheat sheet, like, for example, heart rate times stroke volume. That would be angiographic cardiac output. All right, so here's an example. Patient has uh, angiographic cardiac output, 5.6 liters a minute, a thermodilutional cardiac output of 4.5 liters a minute. What's the regurgitant fraction? So 5.6 minus 4.5 divided by 5.6 gives uh, 19 or 0 0.196. That's 19.6%, or you can round it up to 20%. And here's an example using stroke volume instead of cardiac output. If, a, if the angiographic, it's the formula is angiographic stroke volume minus the TD or fixed stroke volume divided by the angiographic stroke volume. So the patient has, in this example, they have an end diastolic volume of 100 and end systolic volume of 25. So let me, so let me see, you might say, well, how do you get that? So you can either get it on echo or in the cath lab, when you take your picture uh, of your, uh, your LV at the end of diastole and you trace around the LV and the computer says, all right, there's a certain amount of volume in there. And then you freeze frame on the, at the end of um, uh, systole and trace around that in the blue. And then the computer will calculate the difference between that and the difference between this and here. And this example, it says the stroke volume is 97.9. So back to our formula, we have an end diastolic volume of 100 and in systolic volume of 25, that means you put out 75, uh, went out. We don't know what came back, though. But So we have an angiographic stroke volume of 75, uh, but our thermodilutional stroke volume is only 40. So we have 75 angiographic stroke volume minus 40 TD uh, stroke volume divided by 75. That gives 0.466 or 47%. So that gives us a 47% uh, regurgitant fraction, which is, which is pretty bad. All right, so if you just keep in mind that if you, if you, whether you're talking about cardiac output, whether you talk about stroke volume, it's what should have gone forward minus what actually did go forward divided by what should have gone forward, and that's the percent regurgitant fraction. So I guess you have to remember, well, what's the difference between what actually went forward, which is TD or FIC, versus angiographic, what should have gone forward, like heart rate times stroke volume. That's what should go forward, but some of it leaks back. All right, so I hope this helps clear up how to calculate regurgitant fraction. Um, if you like the video, I know my cat does because he keeps rubbing on the microphone. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up. It would help my channel. And if you found the information helpful or useful, uh, consider subscribing to the channel. And if you do, remember to turn on notifications so that you don't miss when the next video comes out. All right, guys. Thanks so much. And we'll see you in the next video.